Are the recordings on the Bay ICT site? Is that where we should look? They at? are. Yeah. Um, they are, are um, underneath Tech Talks. We've got a whole um, archive of, I think, probably since the very beginning. Yeah. yeah. Great. Awesome. Are you guys going to put anything on the green screen behind uh, Kevin and the interns? Uh, <laughs> we could, but we are. We thought we'd focus on just getting everyone. No distractions, huh? Yeah, right. We got a beautiful green. Though. It's all so really nice green. green. <laughs> Yeah, like, there must be a fan the person. Oh, the person? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I wonder what the blocks are like. Like the Apple person? I think we're probably good to go, Joanne, if, if you're feeling ready for it. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's okay. Go. Um. Hello everyone, my name is Joanne Denning and I am the department chair for film, television and art digital media at Diablo Valley College. I'm also heavily involved in the Regional Virtual Production Academy, which is a collaborative uh, academy, collaborative program. Uh, and it, it, it involves six community colleges. You can see all of them down here. And we're expanding out to include potentially the whole system eventually. And it's been really exciting to work on this program. Uh, we've been kind of connecting, collaborating, and working together for almost, well, close to two years. And we have a uh, certificate of achievement um, fundamentals already developed, and that will be uh, for students in spring, so students can start registering. And then we have a advanced certificate planned uh, to be available in fall 2024. And that will also be a certificate of achievement. And then we have an AA planned to also be available in fall 24. And then we are hoping to develop a, a series of professional certificates and potentially a BA. So it's a it's a really cool program. And um, you know, they're in career education in the community colleges, especially in emerging high-tech industries. We're not really transfer academic because there's really no other public program in California that's going to offer what we offer. So it's it's a wonderful opportunity for students in, in the system to get these um, skill sets that are really going to help them get jobs. Virtual production. What is virtual production? If you don't know, virtual production is a filmmaking and video production technique. Uh, that combines physical and digital elements uh, to create immersive and realistic environments for filming. And it really involves integration of real world sets, actors, props, computer generated imagery, and other digital technologies. And this is the important word in real time. It's also part of a wider umbrella uh, called real time technologies uh, that is emerging. And I'm actually uh, the leader for the Education SIG for the Real-Time Community, which is a um, international network of industry professionals uh, that are all collectively getting together to talk about all the stuff we can do with this new technology. So one of the most exciting things that's happened in the last few months for the RVPA is we, when we were um, speaking at a conference last spring, uh, the Foundation for California Community Colleges was in the audience. Um, Sonia and Trudeau Reynoso was there and she came up to us and she asked us if we would want to partner and potentially be funded for some interns. And so we were really excited and we connected with the 
uh, foundation. And what's happened is the foundation has partnered with the California Film Commission and they're being funded to connect current and prospective students with employers for paid career-based learning in the film industry. I wanna stress though, that virtual production is not just about uh, you think Hollywood or you think films, it's really an emerging technology that is in a lot of different industry sectors, health, sports, there's a lot of uh, need for production and it really is replacing the more traditional production. We call it virtual production, but eventually we might just call it production, but it's very new emerging and there's lots of cool stuff we can do with it. I wanted to take us over to um, our amazing interns and instructor. We have Azzy and Justin and Kevin Leeper, who is the instructor uh, of the program right now. And he's also our technical lead and is receiving release time to uh, both research virtual production and um, engage us really deeply in the industry pipeline. So Kevin, why don't you take it from here and I'll go into our next slide. Thanks, Joanne. Um, welcome everyone. My name is Kevin Lieber. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll just start with the real-time uh, XR support edge. Uh, I think that, um, if we could, it's it's nice to kind of click through a couple of the slides and maybe we'll go backwards. But the real time XR Sport Edge project was um, one of our, our first projects with the interns. Um, you can see who was working on this project. We were brought in really uh, late into the project, um, but an idea of what we're doing. It's a, a little it's a complicated project in in the sense that it uh, was. Um, a lot of people working together over a year long project to, to um, really um, push the boundaries of all the technology in real time. So there was a lot of um, real time capture of uh, uh, spot, uh, fighting um, uh, two fighters. Um, you can see here, this is the capture scenario right here. This was done in London. Um, and then was really, or not London, but somewhere outside of London, and then was actually sent over to another venue in, in another part of England. And, and then it was, it was going all over the world um, at the same time, um, which was the project. Uh, you can see kind of the idea. We had premises, we had edge computing, we had cloud computing, and we had end users. It was a really... The challenge was really getting everything to sync together in this project. How could we get so many disparate um, technologies to come together and end um, where everyone could watch it? There were so many people involved. I mean, audio was a really big deal. Um, so there's spatial live audio, which really ended up being a really big deal. But also there are some things called Hear Me Cheer, which is an interesting uh, industry that's um, connecting uh, fans uh, um, real time in in, in um, an XR sort of situation where either virtually or on a screen or live in a venue that's showing video that people can actually interact digitally as fans. Um, the 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 digital twins, the two people fighting, were um, were actually registered um, registered as digital people, um, and so it's a new a new way of dealing with uh, uh, how people are. Um, uh, maintaining their, their personality as a digital person and a, and a real person and kind of uh, thinking about these ideas. Um, the shot that we were brought in, the point we were brought into was this point right here. This was our proof of concept. We were asked to take all this footage and um, present it uh, some way emotionally, uh, some way to, sh to show that these fighters were punching with force that um, you could track what, what arm or foot was moving. We were doing color coding and, and um, trails to track how, how the arms were moving and the, and, the, and the numbers were telling us the speed of the punches. Um, so there's a, there's a data ana analysis of the fight as well. Um, and that was kind of what we were in charge of. And then lastly, we, after the proof of concept was made, we went to our final output for the venue, which was still work in progress, honestly. Um, and that's something about the IBCs that it's all work in progress. Um, 
nothing is things fail. It's about learning, and um, it's a really great uh, group of people to work with. But this was the final output. This is where people would have seen these two people uh, interacting with each other in a fight. And um, yeah, it was a really interesting project, and we learned a lot. Um, it was our our big learning, I think, in it was the um, really the inspiration of how this IBC was working together, how all of these people came together uh, in the industry and hearing them talk through the, the problem and hearing all of these people discuss from the different angles. And uh, it was really inspiring to us to approach our project in a similar way. Um, and I think we'll talk more about how that's in, influenced other courses in our process as we're going further. But I'd like to kind of open it up to my, my interns and let them talk about their experiences here. So I'm gonna let them speak. Uh, yeah, hi, my name is Justin Mead. I'm one of the interns. Um, it has been very fun to work on all these things. That last project you guys saw was like, that was the first day I came in, we were just straight to work on that. And it was a blast to figure all that stuff out. I was the one who did the, the trails on that one and the different sorts of uh, like the numbers you saw on the screen, um, which was stuff that I had never really done before. And it was really a blast to sort of like figure out how to put that in this, in all this like data that we were getting and to make it in such like a presentable way that we're able to show it off as like our proof of concept. That was my personal contribution to it. Uh, uh, I, I worked for predominantly, oh, sorry. Uh, hello, I'm Adam. Uh, I worked predominantly on the, uh, the getting the, mod the animation data attached to the uh, models themselves because the, format from which we got the data in was very different than anything I had used before. And we ended up learning a lot about retargeting rigs and, uh, you know, getting things, uh, animation data to work on uh, metahumans in the sequencer and all sorts of stuff. It's very fun. I'm yeah. going to come back to this question for you two. I'm not going to let you off the hook. Um, how was working on this project uh, different than working, because I know you've taken a lot of classes in our program, uh, potentially, and you've, we've do, we try to do project-based learning, but how was it really different? I mean, what were some of the things that were maybe stressful, or what didn't you expect, and what did you feel was really beneficial from working really um, on, a on a timeline? You guys were given you know, not much time to complete this. Um, so how did that feel and what do you think? Uh, sh stressful. <laughs> yeah, it, it was literally, quite literally the first day of the internship. We were like, we got contacted by this company. We got a, we got a project we got to work on. Uh, it, it, it felt very, it felt very cool to kind of be like, oh yeah, we're working with this group in, in, in the UK and this group over here and awesome. these people want, <laughs> this data we it, it was very fun but it, it the diff in terms of how it felt different from working in a normal academic classroom very very different the the for one there's there's it's there's a lot more communication because there's less people but uh it, you you really have to work on problem solving is is a big thing because you, like we have, we we run it. We ran into a bunch of problems. As I was saying, uh, it was data that we had never worked with before. It was uh, meta humans that we had barely even seen, and and getting them to work together on a timeline was difficult, but it was gratifying. Yeah, it was much more. It was like because in previous classes I've done, and especially like around this sort of stuff, it was more like semester long projects, and it's like you're like learning all of this stuff like over time to build up to this final thing and this project was very much that but condensed and it was it was definitely stressful at times but it was also a lot of fun because because it's condensed you end up thinking in ways you don't think like it, when you have such a long time to figure something out your mind just sort of like slowly works through it but with this sort of time crunch it actually strangely enough it made it easier to focus on what we had to get done because it was like we could see the end line right from the start. So it made it made the whole project feel much more like direct and focused and problem solving as well, just sort of benefited from that. It felt like work yeah. rather than class. Exactly. And you know, we have all these really cool like 
partners that we're working with that was just so like I still am just so ecstatic every time I see like our project next to like sponsored by Microsoft or something like that like that's so cool <laughs> yeah um I will pull up at some point uh the IBC website which um really has the RVPA logo there and um they were so impressed with the work I mean they the industry partners uh you know felt so thankful to Azzy and Justin um, for all the work they did. And Movers is one of the companies, they're coming out tomorrow and they're continuing to work on this project with us on an accessibility level. So we're, we're thinking about accessibility uh, and including some accessibility uh, into uh, some, of the, um, some of the learnings. So very cool. But I wanna go on, um, I know Kevin, Kevin was funded uh, to be working on this, and um, we're we're really discussing this as 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 the RVPA why we need to fund these positions and make them sustainable, and why it's important at a community college level. A lot of people think of community college as you know maybe transfer. Why would you want to fund academic research there? But what we're seeing in these high tech industries is that our programs are actually, you know, higher level than maybe even a bachelor's because they're, they're meant to just immediately segue into careers. Many of our students might even have degrees already in place and come back for this training. And so Kevin, can you talk to this point about why it's so important to, to really uh, fund academic research proof of concept? Yeah. Um... Well, I think that the it's right here. I mean, you know, the the enthusiasm of the the students is really one of the big things that we see. Um, we're getting a lot of people coming into this room and wanting to work with us um, on these these projects, not even outside of class. I had to create a Discord group just to keep track of how many people wanted to come in and visit. So I, it, that's one aspect of it. Um, so it's it's being here, being available, and keeping this space open and running for people to be here. Um, if I'm teaching or doing other activities, it's really difficult to do that. I, I would not have this time to do this at all. Um, and so that's a big part of it. Um, I think that, um, you know, I have I've lost my thought, Joanne, a little bit. Maybe you can help me out here with it. But um, I really, uh, that was the main thing that I was thinking about right there. But let me try to come back to it because I, I lost my thought there. But um, it's the, it's the, this is a good slide for me because it does talk about the pipeline. What, what I really was excited about is that this gives the us an industry a way to work with the industry ahead of the curve. Um, we as as an institution we're often teaching behind looking at a movie or something that's been made and using technology that's behind what was actually happening and what's now. And we're often working from behind. And so you know when we're when we're here, we're working at the front end of the of the of the industry with these these people who are pushing the, the boundaries of the industry and really um, being on the future end of things. And that's really where we want our students to be. We want them to be learning the future so that when they come out, they're ready there. We don't want them to come out learning the old or the past and suddenly having to learn the new. Um, so especially in a field like with technology like this where it evolves so rapidly. Right. It is so fast. I do uh, a lot of research here and I see like, Every day we find some like new technology in this industry in the in virtual production that will like double what we're able to do. And it's just crazy how often that just happens where we just find all this new stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think what we had talked about too was the importance of faculty staying uh really deeply entrenched in the pipeline themselves, um, so that they understood the language of industry to speak the language is important and to understand what industry is actually doing as opposed to sort of what we think industry is doing is hugely important. 
Um, so that's that's my knowledge of it from conversations with Kevin. I think um, really understanding and being part of this pipeline. And also I feel like education sometimes gets forgotten and industry develops their own training programs. But if they can reach out to us and see what we offer and get excited about us, I think that's a huge opportunity for the California Community College System uh, to deliver this type of education. Indeed, I think also with the pipeline, with the future, you know, it's also uh, getting our, our foot in the door. I think what we're talking about is having having industry actually look to us, right? Like like Joanne's saying, like like we are a partner. Like we we could be part of the pipeline of building something and such that we're we're creating the people that can do it. You know, and that, that we could be a part of that pipeline and that they could be thinking about us. And we're trying so we're trying to get them to see us, to see that we're we we could help them find and research or these sorts of things. And so that's uh I think that's one of the that takes time to create those uh those those relationships with those people and it takes time to learn their language. It, it takes time to um you know learn the technology and then it takes time to to get it here and, and get it running and, and all that other aspect of it. So it's a lot of time and effort. Um and I think that's a point I'd make as well. Yeah, and I, I really see Azzy and Justin as our student leaders, and I think them being in our classes, you know, they're going in and they're discussing these projects, and they're able to speak the language, they're actually able to do things that a lot of industry people can't do, and they've figured it out, like Kevin says, ahead of the curve, and so obviously they're going to get jobs, and they're going to be ready, but what I think they do beyond that is they inspire and motivate students in the class. I think, um, Kevin, one thing that you said that struck me was that the level of enthusiasm within your class had, had greatly increased. And that was really exciting to hear that, that it's no longer theoretical and that we can the students are given um, a window into actually what they might be doing. Yeah. Yeah, so so we're talking about this, how you know how it integrates back into the traditional classroom, and I think um, you know Kevin, I know you you're so passionate about it. Kevin's a really uh, innovative educator, and so maybe you can talk a little bit about that and and why you know this may be different than a you know a more traditional internship program. Like Justin and Azzy could obviously get internships with some of our partners right now, that might be good for them, but why is it so important that we do it as the RVPA? Yeah, well, well we we have those other slides and I don't know if we wanna discuss those right now, but you know, I, what we learned a lot from the IBC was, uh, well, they call it the learnings, you know, learning and learnings and what are your learnings and discussing those learnings and, um, you know, we, we're looking into how to replicate a scenario in school that's similar um, and using apprenticeships in, as that way. Um, a cognitive uh, internship or apprenticeship is really based on learning. And, and so, um, Joanne, could you go back up to the first slide we started on, the one back, yeah. And so, you know, what's different about this is that um, we're, we're, working on a on an idea and working on the on discussing our learnings um having a, again can you go to the third slide next slide and I, I like this one because it helps me see the differences and 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 to me this is really important because they really talk to um the the differences between how we can uh work as a group this one this look the simple task complex tasks you know it's a little different than the list I would have normally picked, but you know we're really trying to get people in the cognitive process, like like how do you speak, how do you come up with your idea, like and discussing it and bouncing the idea off each other. And this was probably one of the biggest things we learned from uh, our advisory board when we're meeting with people from the industry. It kept coming up like problem solving, like how do you problem solve? What is your problem solving process? Me and Justin yeah. are often given tasks that we have no idea how to complete, and then we figure it out. Yeah, and, and that's actually one of the more fun aspects of it. It is really fun because, like, there there's some days where I come in expecting to do like 
what we've been working on. And you're like, oh, uh, you should try, you should try setting up a server. I know how to set up a server now. I didn't think I would know how to do that, but I was told one day to look into it. And then I went down a rabbit hole for two weeks and then I did it. And it was it just so like the satisfaction I got from finishing that, even though it was something I didn't even know I wanted to start was just so like immense and then also uh like this says sort of like um like what i learned from it was just um like putting those learnings into just like a, a shared space we have to sort of like put our findings was just so like satisfying then because i got to type up everything i did and i got to type up like how i figured out how to do it and i got to look at my own process and it helped to make me more like self-aware of what i do when i'm learning how to do these things and then that ended up helping me learn even more things. And it's just like, it's a never ending cycle of learning. And it was just so much fun to be in that cycle and to stay in that cycle now. Yeah, I, I loved a story uh, Kevin told me about going into the visual effects class and a student asked him like, well, can you show me how to do it? And he said, I don't know how to do it. You have to figure it out. I mean, that was a, a, a moment for all of us to realize as instructors and what we're, we're actually not traditional instructors, we are facilitators. And I think that's a huge difference in a program like this where we are learning with our student interns how to navigate, how to do things collectively. And it's very powerful to, I think, understand that from an educational perspective as a student. Um, and I also think I'm going to go back to the language because I think uh, one thing that um, Kevin and I were on all these different platforms when we were interfacing with the IBC um, Slack, you know, teams, we were, they navigate things in ways that in academia we're not used to. And I think it was really important for us to be involved in these platforms and to get to understand and to have our students understand these platforms because that's what they're going to jump into when they start working. So that was another thing I thought was really, from my perspective, as just a person kind of interfacing with industry, I wasn't actually doing any of the work. I can't take credit for that, but I was interfacing with the industry a lot. And I learned a lot just in how they communicate, how they share files. And it, it was great for our program to collectively see that. Yeah, I could add on to what um, Justin's saying here about the, the the networking and setting up a server and just, you know, that's something that um, has been on my to-do list for probably two years. Um, I, I just keep trying to get it to it and get to it. And it's a good example of where I finally, I have help with these people. You know, I can, these people can actually help me. They're, and they're contributing to our department. They're contributing to the school and making everything better here, you know, which is another aspect of this that just really I'll yeah. often discuss with him how we should proceed in class the next day <laughs> it's really great you know it's a really different way of approaching it um and it's it's exciting it's exciting yeah um so you know I think I think we'll we'll just get stronger. I think one of the things we've, and Olivia, I know you can speak to this with me, but what we have learned as an RVPA, I mean, I, we are trying to do something that's really hard in the community college system. We're trying to create a collaborative program with six schools, and that's never been done. And we're realizing how flawed our systems are and how we need to change our systems to be able to do things like this. And I think coming back to a programmatic level, I feel like what this does for us, it does show us where we're weak and what we need to do um, to get up to speed. And that's that's hugely beneficial. I love the word learnings because I think we all are constantly learning. And in this new um, climate that we're in with AI and all this new technology, I think that's just gonna be the norm. And the sooner we embrace it, the better as both uh, faculty and students, um, but it's also really exciting. It's different than sitting in a classroom seat, listening to someone talk or reading a book and learning how to write an essay. It really is about problem solving and it's a new world. And we're, I think with the interns and with um, the RVPA support and with all of our colleges, uh, we're, we're getting to a place that's really exciting as an educational institution. And we are um, under, you know, we're, we're really solving 
or hopefully will be able to solve a problem that exists in these high tech sectors, which is underrepresentation, especially in um, sectors like virtual production. And you know, we can actively bridge this diversity gap. Um, you know, we have data out there uh, where we know we're actually the biggest educational system in the United States, the California Community College System. 69% approximately of our students are from diverse ethnic backgrounds. 35% are first generation college students. And so it's very um, important from an equitable standpoint that we prepare these students for real work, for, for jobs that are emerging. And we give them these opportunities because otherwise it's just going to be students from private academies who can afford those academies. And our students, you know, they have such amazing perspectives from their diverse backgrounds that we need to really um, see ourselves as, uh, as, as answering a lot of our, you know, students need to, um, you know, well, actually I'm saying that wrong. We're, we're, we're answering the equity problem a little bit, which is exciting. And then just summary, you know, I know we're we're maybe going to talk a little bit more, but early access to industry pipeline will greatly enhance a student's job readiness during their academic journey. And that's what we're here for. We're really here to get students job, whether they're transferring or going on to get their master's. Really, what we want is job readiness and whether they take the virtual production class early in their academic career or it's their last class, we want them to understand what industry looks like. And to do this, we need wonderful managers like Olivia, who's been so supportive. We need programs like the RVPA where we collaborate and we learn from each other as academic institutions. And we need industry to really trust us and to get excited by us. And I'm so thankful to Azzy and Justin because I think that's what they really did for us. I mean, I think industry saw what we can do and the schools, if I go back to that initial slide up here, you know, these were the schools that we were with, King's College London, Trinity College Dublin, Bowie State. These were our academic partners and our students from the California Community College System delivered um, the most important part of the project. And they were, I think just in some ways they were thrilled and surprised. And I think they were not expecting this. And I think that I'm very thankful for, um, for the hard work that you guys did because I think it really was so exciting to see the enthusiasm of our industry partners and our educational partners. Kevin, do you have something last to say? Or Azzy, Justin? Sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we were just, it was just awesome to work on that one. It is And it's still, the more we hear about how thrilled they were, um, the more thrilled we get. And we're very excited to uh, continue our work in this industry and to continue with these sort of uh, the innovations that we are seeing like now in this industry, we hope that we get to end up being a part of those innovations someday as a result of this program. I, I really, I think this program was really important in showing me what I wanted to do uh, with, you know, as you know, with my job and with my career. Uh, like when I when I when I started working with Leaper, I kind of felt like I was stumbling around in the dark. And then the more that I've been in this program, I've been I I feel I feel much better about where I'm where I'm at and where I'm headed. Um, as far as this project goes, it was it was really exciting for us to work on, and for me, it was really exciting to um, see a project go all the way through to. Um, into the industry and actually leave the school. It's it's a new experience for me. I've never had that happen before. Um, so just as in my professional career, it was really exciting as well. I, I've never done anything like it. Um, and it opens up a door to 
and different um, curriculum, different ways of approaching the teaching experience. And I'm really excited about that. I, I feel rejuvenated in a way, and I'm, I'm excited about teaching. Um, and that's that's good for me. Um, I'm really happy also about the movers that that they were the the, the group that were doing the capturing of the um, two professional fighters. Um, they're a local company, um, and they really are interested in in working with us more. And their technology is is unique. It's um, that's partly why we had a hard time working with it. Um, it provides a, a data set that is um, unusual to work with, uh, and a lot of it. Um, and so it uses cameras and um, artificial intelligence to um, track a human being um, without having any kind of markers or anything on their bodies, which is important for people who are fighting or acting or in other ways that we want to see their bodies, but also track them at the same time. It's really interesting technology and um, hard to work with. And so we're going to have them in the space uh, tomorrow, actually uh, proof of concept on another project, uh, another digital twin project. This one will be a musician. Um, and so, um, and we're getting into some accessibility um, aspects of the technology, which I think is really exciting and interesting and opens up another door that we haven't even really considered how um, this real-time technology is going to affect accessibility. Um, and that that's actually really uh, an intriguing idea that we're just now learning about this new project. So it's just, it's just how, you know, you had to search for this stuff. Now it's kind of coming at us, which is really I mean, that's, that's, it's, it's really exciting. So I, that's what I would say to sum it up. Yeah, we're really hoping to just continue. Um, we're really enthusiastic about uh, continuing to connect uh, with educational partners, industry partners, and with each other as a, a system of schools. Um, you know, we kind of started the internship program at DVC but we want to expand it out and we definitely want all of our um, partners within the RVPA to benefit from this and to become part of it and to have their um, interns at each school potentially interfacing together, uh, working on projects collectively. And that is one of the most exciting things I think about virtual production is it does allow you to work together from many different locations and um, it connects us. And so it's, yeah, it's it's our goal. And I think um, we're hoping that we can continue to be funded, that we can continue uh, to interface with industry on a really real level and provide our students these opportunities. So I think that's it. Um, well, I, no, I, I have a, just a couple of comments. Yeah. Questions. Comments, questions. Okay. You know, first, first of all, it, uh, it has been so exciting to be a part of this project. Uh, as 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 Joanne pointed out, we're 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 breaking into new territory here. First of all, as a collaborative, um, and then with this exciting opportunity, and and I got to say, congratulations to Kevin and and the interns. You've done an, an incredible job here. This was this was totally a wonderful opportunity that was not really part of the initial plan, but that's basically how this project has been going. <laughs> um, and it, it's, it's really, really exciting um, because it seems, it seems in all aspects we're, we're just really breaking into new territory. Uh, my, my, I was, the, the whole idea, this concept or this, the way you're expressing the traditional versus the cognitive internship this is the first that I'm seeing it described that way. I think it is absolutely incredible. Um, so, and the question that you you asked was your, yourselves, what what did you learn? And when when you were describing the differences between the traditional and the cognitive internship, what I what I learned is what at least my first take on it is that wow, if we could have something in the middle of that, okay. I think that we would do be doing both our employers and our students um, a, a, a really, really big jump into the effectiveness of, of, of internships and what employers could learn 
about their interns in doing the the role, you know, taking on the role of an intern in in a, in a work environment. So my thought is, you know, what did you learn about how you could apply cognitive internships in a way that, you know, makes takes internships to another level? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna let Kevin speak, but I, I want to say for me, what my understanding is that it is really great to have a programmatic internship uh, body of interns working collectively under the guidance of really knowledgeable faculty like Kevin Leeper. Um, and you need people supporting Kevin. Uh, people that help network and, and interface with the industry to bring them into the program. So I think it's systematic, but I think what we've been trying to do and what Kevin's really making happen is that interfacing with his, his capstone class, the visual effects class, and making it not so much about Azzy and Justin, who are hugely critical, but making that model the classroom itself. And you know, Kevin taught a intro to digital imaging in the summer, and it struck me that when he talked about that class, he talked about AI and how AI is changing things in our classrooms. And, you know, students may not need these skills that they were learning a year ago. They need new skills. And so instead of building an image, you're now maybe building a world in a digital imaging class because you have that power. We're becoming more powerful very quickly as creators. So I'm going to turn it over to Kevin before I say too much. <laughs> no, that was great, Joanne. I, I guess, you know, in terms of the traditional, one thing that stands out is you would bring an intern into that scenario and, um, you know, the employer is going to want to get work out of that person. You know, they're going to want to get product or work or that sort of thing. And it's very oriented to the job itself. Um, and you will learn things, but on on the project as you go. Um, and this style, we aren't. We do have this this project with the IBC, which was one that that worked well. But what's nice about that particular project was its uh, incubator aspect of it, that it was uh, about learnings, and that it we we had the grace to fail. And I think that that was really an important thing. And I don't. I think failure is something that we use a little too liberally in this industry, like, a, you know, fail fast, that sort of uh, scenario. But I think, and I think that's maybe not the best way to approach that. I think maybe it's iterate fast would be a better way than saying fail fast. You know, failure is not our goal. We are not here to fail. We're here to succeed. But at the same time, we recognize we're learning. And in that, that, process, you know, we may not get to the end, or it may look different at the end, or whatever. And I think what you're describing, that experience where we came in quickly, and, and in that scenario where we were, you know, if we saw something wasn't working, we just moved on. We didn't give ourselves a lot of time to move on, you know, we just kept going. And I think bringing that into the class is challenging, you know, it is challenging, but I do think that the cognitive um, approach offers a little more flexibility in that we don't really have to work along the, 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 the finish a project, you know, and, and this real linear pipeline sort of projection. What we're trying to get out of that is uh, this linearness and really get into, um, well, what if we have multiple learnings happening at once and that, you know, which which one's actually outpacing the other and when do we shift off one and all jump into this one, you know, and 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 that kind of working within the classroom is what we're working, that's what we're working on right now is that strategy of um, presenting a problem globally to the class and then, and then letting people come up with solutions and present ideas, right? Um, we're, we're encouraging, uh, it, there's no particular groups, but people are grouping together and, and talking, you know, and, and people are walking around the room. And I think that it is really critical to get people out of their seats uh, and, and stay, get out of these workstations, sort of classroom scenarios where we're all in a row. 
but rather walking around and and trying to discuss more and um and really working on the learnings what are you learning what what and, and describing the learning and showing the learning and and i guess uh, we are new to it i mean like uh, you know, bringing this into the classroom i think is, is interesting i think it's also um from the student perspective challenging in that a student's coming into a classroom with the idea that the teacher's going to present uh, material and I'm going to learn the material. And it's a classic kind of lecture um, lab kind of uh, traditional approach. Um, you know, and so a student might come to you and say, what's our project or how do I approach this? And, and the answer back to them is, I don't know. What do you think? You know, and that's a different that's a different scenario. And 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 let's let's go walk over to this person. They've got an idea, and let's let's talk to them and see what their idea is. And I guess that's how we've been approaching it in the classroom. And it's a little work in progress. It definitely, we're we're it's our first try in the classroom. So um, uh, we'll keep doing it from this stage where we're doing it in the internship in this room and sort of open space. But we're gonna we're bringing it into the classroom as well. Um, I, it's that's the approach. And we have a question. This is for Azzy. Um, It's from Danny, who is a classmate. BF BFX has come a long way, but for people who are looking into stuff like this for storytelling use, how can people like me apply it? I missed the first bit, so it may have been explained, but is this the next big, big push in VR? Mm -hmm. That one's for you, Azzy. <laughs> well, what do we what do we mean when we say storytelling? That's the that's the part that confuses me. Because there's many different ways that you could like infinite possibilities almost. Um, I don't the the wording of the question confuses me. You want me to... You can see it in the chat, maybe. Yeah, well our chat we have to go and check it. Um, <laughs> and then Danny, if you want to speak up to to clarify, go for it. You know, what I would, if I could, I'll jump in a little bit. You can maybe do this. I, I would say what what I'm seeing at least um, in in a year ago, people were really talking about virtual production, um, and really about these. You know, we're doing we're behind a green screen. Uh, normally, this would be an LED wall. And I, I'm not going to go into explaining that because it gets kind of weird. Maybe look that up. But um, what I'm seeing is really the big push is rather that this is a new tool in the arsenal of making a film. And that what um, it's what is happening is it's it's actually changing the way people are thinking about their making a film. And I think of the creator of that film, which maybe some of you have seen that film, but um, the, the director discussed the process of how they made it. They didn't use virtual production at all, but they were using the ideas of product, virtual production. They were thinking in terms of real time. They were thinking in terms of artificial intelligence. They were thinking about the advances of what we've gone through. They, they had the ability to move files using um, the IT, IP protocols. You know, they, they were, you know, so they were, the, this technology is just pushing everything into the future and opening up uh, other avenues to make films. Um, so I think, yeah, you guys. Yeah. Uh, in terms of storytelling specifically, I've been watching a lot of, um, uh, a big like sort of starting push in virtual production was the show uh the mandalorian i'm sure pretty much everyone knows the mandalorian at this point but the the virtual production aspects of that their big um led wall was it was very like revolutionary for how they did it. not only because like when shooting it obviously you have very reflective stuff like you have the armor that the main character wears you have vehicles that are reflective and now they actually reflect the world. You don't have to like go in afterwards and like do all these steps. They actually reflect where they're supposed to be in space. And um, specifically with storytelling, it helps the actors in that space as well. I've been watching interviews where, it, I mean, like if I'm trying to act like this is outer space, it's a lot harder than if I can see that this is outer space. And what we're getting in here is the ability to see that outer space. We have this green screen now, we're not at LED wall level yet, but we have this green screen here and we usually have like a camera point as, and on a TV monitor, uh, like we have in front of us right now for the Zoom call, we would show um, like me staying in front of the screen and the spaceship behind me in real time. And it all happens in real time. And it makes it easier for, cause we have uh, people come in here, we have actors come in here who um, 
we use to help shoot some like proof of concept scenes. We do a lot of like proof of concept work, just showing off like what we can do with this space. And they are able to see where they're acting. They're able to see if they're wearing motion capture, they're able to see what they are, where they are in space. And they're able to see all that in real time. And it just helps us convey that story a lot more. Um, for virtual reality, um, like if you're thinking virtual reality games, this is basically that, but without the headset. I mean, we're getting in that space, but without having to have all the goggles on. It's just you look in front of you and you see where you are without any sort of like tech on you. That is the sort of goal of virtual production. And that's what we're sort of working toward. I think that there is uh, a, a ton of different applications for this, for virtual production that we haven't even gone over here. Uh, the more that we keep looking into it, like me and Justin are constantly like staring at our at, at the screens, going like, "What? I didn't even know it was possible." Uh, and looking at other people's projects and 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 just being blown away. Uh, I, I like I think this is probably like the biggest step in humans' abilities to tell stories. That period. We saw this really cool uh, demo on a website the other day that was like completely mind blowing. They had this, um, they had this light set up in the real space, like just a, a handheld like spotlight. And in the virtual world, they had um, a red light as well. And so you have this real red light, and you have this virtual red light, and you put a tracker on the real one, and then it maps to the virtual one. And what they're able to get was with a camera that's also tracked below that. They're able to get those shots and get like the red lighting on the face and then have it be on the backdrop as well because they're tracking a virtual one. And like, I mean, that's just stuff we've discovered in the last week is the amount of stuff we've discovered over the last couple of months has just been crazy. Every week is like a new mind blow. Yeah. And I would add to that that, you know, and if you don't, that might have been hard to understand that, you know, with an actor in a, in a suit, they have white balls on them. They don't know what they look like. Um, we had people come in, they, they see, oh, I'm a robot. I didn't know I was, you know, and then they start acting like a robot, you know, and they start moving and, and suddenly they see themselves moving, right? And they can see what they look like in it. And they actually can, we were noticing they were, they were changing their acting. They were changing the way they're being in the world. And then people were inspired, like, well, what if we put the, what if we put the robot here instead of there? And that's not something we could have done in post, you know, that, that, that was because we were seeing the whole shot in real time and we could make those decisions on the fly really we could put robots where we wanted and we had two people acting as robots and they were in this weird scene of like a star wars scene and you know that that's kind of i think another thing that really adds to it is that ideas are happening as you shoot as well and that's always exciting when you can do that so not everything's in post i see all game stuff <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, are there any other questions? Um, well, Danny, Danny says his mic isn't working, but and his phrasing wasn't the best, but you answered his question tenfold. So yeah. thank you. <laughs> Congratulations again, dude. Yeah, when it, when, it, when it popped up, when he when popped up, I was like, I'm sorry, Danny. <laughs> Danny R. <laughs> okay, well, it's it's been such a pleasure um, to be here. Hopefully, this gets recorded, more people watch it, and um, it's awesome to have mom here. Thank you for coming. Uh, Kevin's mom is here, uh, and uh, we just are excited. And Olivia, hopefully, um, you know you're with us. Yeah, congratulations. We'll definitely, uh, I, I want to continue the discussion about the uh, internship approach. And by the way, I want to mention that uh, this this uh, is kind of piloted, as, as Joanne mentioned, this whole concept of working with the uh, Film Commission and the Foundation is something that we're going to continue to, we're going to scale it. So you you all proved that this works and uh, it's got people excited about it. So I wanna, I'm, I'm looking at this from the project side of this thing and, and how it just continues to uh, just innovate and expand and the work being done here is just incredible. And I thank you all uh, for uh, helping us, helping it make it a success. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you everybody for coming. It's been a great event. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you.
That's my girlfriend. <laughs> Hi, Bernice. You need to talk? Okay. Yeah, okay. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> thank you, Joanne. Thank you. Yeah, Have thank you. Care. Bye. Here. Yeah.